My name is Chao Sheng, and I am the Global Product Manager for Regenerative Medicine Portfolio at Milton E. Biotech. Well, in fact, we have planned originally to showcase this great system at ISCT 2020. But then, you know, ISCT decided to go virtual, so we are going virtual as well here. What we will do today, we will first use 15 minutes to give you a very quick introduction of this brand new uh, Climax Prodigy Adherence of Culture system, including the hardware and the software features. And then we will give you a virtual demo so that you can directly see how the Prodigy system works in general and how the system looks like. So if you have questions during the presentation or the demo, please use the chat box in the lower right corner to communicate with us. Okay, so this is my disclaimer. Okay, so I think we have all witnessed in recent years that regenerative medicine really became a major focus worldwide. The number of proponent stem cell and mesenchymal stromal cell-based clinical trials are actually increasing every year. Especially, as I pointed out here, those PSC-derived somatic cells are already being tested for the treatment of uh, macular degeneration, Parkinson's disease, spinal cord injury, or cardiac diseases. And then, of course, you know, we have to wait and see the clinical results of these trials, but many people in the field, including us, believe that PSC-based therapies will reveal their great potentials in upcoming years. Yeah, despite these big potentials, manufacturing adherent cells to GMP standard is still a very challenging and complex endeavor. The majority of the current manufacturer processes involve multiple very complex and very expensive de devices, very skilled personnel, at the same time high-class clean rooms. Many separated and open handling steps are introduced into these workflows. Meanwhile, standard in-process control and quality control IPCQC assays are required throughout the whole process. All these factors together really could limit the manufacturer skill, compromise the reproducibility, at the same time significantly drive up the production cost. So everyone in this field is facing the same question. How to make these very complex cell manufacturing processes more standardized, more scalable, at the same time more affordable for the end users. The solution from our side is to integrate all these instruments, open handling steps, skilled personnel, and high-class clean rooms into one automated and closed system. So this is the general concept behind the Climax Prodigy cell manufacturing platform. And over the last years, we have gained a lot of experience in manufacturing uh, hematopoietic cells as well as CAR T cells on the Climax Prodigy that you probably have already heard. And now we have brought our expertise into the regenerative medicine field and developed this brand new adherent cell culture system on the Prodigy for PSCs, MSCs, and other adherent cell types. So now I will just very quickly walk you through the hardware and the software features of the system. Uh, first, this is the functionally integrated Climax Prodigy cell manufacturing platform. Together with this disposable and also GMP compliant tubing sets and other important accessories like this tube sealer and this barcode reader, uh, the whole system could automate cell processing from starting material to the final product. And upon your request, it, it can perform all these different individual cell handling steps. Now, with the adherent cell culture system, cell cultures can take place in two different units, the central code unit and the external culture vessels. So first, here is the central code unit you can see, and there is a Climax Prodigy chamber lies inside the central code unit, or so-called CCU. Uh, 
So this part support adherent and non-adherent cell cultures. It works basically like a small incubator that you can control the temperature from 4 degree to 38 degree inside the CCU. You can also control the concentrations of air and CO2. You could even visualize your cell cultures because we have integrated a small camera under the chamber. Then there are also multiple input ports are available here to support your cell cultures with different medium and cytokines. This Climax Prodigy Chamber offers 100 square centimeter surface space. At the same time, if larger surface space and cell numbers are required, well, you could also connect these big external culture vessels to make them be part of the closed Climax Prodigy system using stereo welding technology. For example, these big multi-layer cell stacks can be connected. But when you culture the cells in the external culture vessels, they have to be kept in the external incubators for the temperature, CO2, and the other culture conditions. And you will see this. We will explain you later in a virtual demo. So the cultivation in both CCU and external culture vessels are realized by this GMP-compliant and disposable tubing set, TS730. So as you can see, this is uh, uh, basically how it looks like. We have a lot of long tubings here on different valves, so the users can actually connect many bags of uh, medium buffers, reagents as they need to the system during the cultivation process because we know culture adherent cells like PSC differentiation processes can be a complex process. You need many different medium reagents and buffers, and these can all be materialized and realized within this tubing set. We also have integrated these target cell bags into the tubing set and also these sampling pouches so that the users can very conveniently passage their cells, harvest the cells, and quality control their cells. Also, as mentioned, these external culture vessels can be connected to the tubing set onto the well uh, 19. Okay, now I would like to shift your attention also to the adherent cell culture software system. So I think the biggest challenge that we are facing here is there are so many different adherent cell types. For example, propotent stem cells, mesenchymal stromal cells, neural cells, cardiomyocytes, et cetera. And we really want to make sure that our system is flexible enough to cover most of the demands. So that is why we modularize each individual cell handling steps. So on the right-hand side, you can see the main menu of the adherent cell culture system. You can see the different modules lies in there. So the user actually could combine these different modules and put them in different orders. This way, very complex cultivation workflows like expansion and the directed differentiation of PCs can be realized in the system. So I want to come back to this process scheme that I introduced you earlier. So now you might already notice many of these individual manual handling steps like surface coating, muscle inoculation, so culture medium chain harvest can be reflected by the different modules within the adherent cell culture system. And within each module, you can choose either the Climax Prodigy Chamber or the external culture vessels. ECV stands for external culture vessel. Within each module, you can also set up all the important cell cultivation parameters. A very small example here is the coating module, so that you can actually set up very freely according to your SOP. You can choose the coating temperature, the coating time, the volume of your coating reagents, and you also have the summary page that can, you can either confirm or reset your settings uh, upon your request. So our goal is, to combine our widely used Climax Prodigy on manufacturing platform, the GMP compliant tubing sets, and this very, flex, very flexible and uh, scalable adherent cell culture system, our Max GMP stem cell culture medium, cytokines, and growth factors, as well as our Max Quant analyzer and the reaffinity recombinant antibodies. So, our system, our product. A portfolio could support the entire adherent stem cell manufacture IPC QC process. So we are not only at the theoretical level, so it's just not like we, we already have developed together with our collaborators, we have established a number of key uh, stem cell workflows. This includes the GMP compliant expansion of MSCs, 
PSCs, as well as efficient and specific differentiation of PSCs into midbrain dopaminergic progenitor cells and cardiomyocytes. So let's first start with uh, MSC expansion. So there we have uh, established, we have developed a GMP-compliant expansion medium, the MSC Brew GMP medium. We already offer them uh, this medium in bag. So we have 500 milliliter or two liter in uh, these two different formats. That depends on your culture skill and your SOP. So now the whole process can take place on the Climax Prodigy platform. From density gradient centrifugation of bone marrow aspirates to as isolation of bone marrow mononuclear cells, and then cell uh, inoculation, cell splitting, medium change, harvesting, until the final product. All can be automated within this closed automated prodigy system. And for the quality control QC assays, uh, we have developed this MNC phenotyping kit. And then on the max quant analyzer, then you could perform standard MSC quality control uh, flow cytometry characterization according to the ICT recommendations. We also offer this ready to use differentiation medium for, uh, to test the multipotency of your MSC cultures. Not only that, we have already extended this per, uh, application to various human tissues, including bone marrow, umbilical cord, and adipose tissues. So multiple experiments across 10 individual donors. Actually, we have did a lot of experiments here. We have recruited uh, samples from 10 donors. So the result we are having shows us very convincingly that we could harvest up to 700 million MSCs within only 18 days. So this is roughly two passages in 18 days. So these resulting cells from all these different tissues express the positive MSC markers, CD73, 90, 100, uh, 105, at very, very high levels, and nearly no expression for the negative markers. But I also want to point it out here. So the examples we showed here, so these 18 days expansion, these are just examples from our side. This is not the maximum capacity of our system. So the, the users could, of course, adapt their SOPs, their in-house protocol, into the prodigy. We would expect by using more starting material and by extending the cultivation time, for example, now we have 18 days, but you can do like three weeks, four weeks, one month, more, yeah? then we would expect the users could harvest more MSCs in the end. In addition, compare, in comparison to the manual process, the hands-on time are also significantly reduced using the Climax Prodigy system. These are the MSC application. Now let's switch to the PSC. So here we also developed a GMP compliant PSC expansion medium. So this is the IPC brew GMP medium. And we could also automate PSC expansion process within the closed prodigy system. And later on, you could request uh, this presentation. So you could directly click here and download the application sheets to find more technical details. So here, I just want to show you, as I mentioned, you can use all these different modules in a tier cell culture system to automate these complex handling process, like uh, surface coating, medium change, cell inoculation, cell splitting, passaging, and harvesting. In the end, we have the STEMX trilineage differentiation kit to test the trilineage differentiation potency of the PSCs. And also using the max quant analyzer and reaffinity antibodies, you can do all the quantitative flow cytometry QC analysis. So here I just want to show you some side-by-side -side comparison between menu and prodigy-based process. So basically you can see the dark blue versus the light blue, basically prodigy versus menu. So judging by the expression of the key potency markers and the trilinear differentiation potentials, these two groups really give rise to very comparable results. And then by using the Climax Prodigy Chamber, which is 100 centimeter, or different sizes of the external culture vessels, like one layer cell stack, like five layer cell stack, or even three five layer cell stack, then the users could reach different culture skills very easily. So someone just asked me, what do you mean by scalable? So this is what I mean. So by choosing different culture vessels, like different size of the culture vessels, you could reach different skill. So then you can scale it up, you can scale it down based on your purpose, based on your SOPs. 
And we also know that establishing GMP-compliant master stem cell bank is always a major step in many clinical applications. So for this purpose, this closed automated GMP-compliant ClinMax Prodigy attunes the culture system together with our GMP, uh, max GMP-grade uh, stem cell culture reagents and the consumables could be very valuable assets for your projects. Not only for the PSC expansion, the tumor cell culture system could also automate very complex, very demanding PSC differentiation processes, such as the made brain dopaminergic progenitor differentiation for Parkinson's disease treatment. And this application has been supported by a very prestigious European consortium, Neuro Stem Cell Repair Consortium. And in this uh, organization, we have collaborated with Dr. Malin Pama and Dr. Agnet Kirkby. So we know that they have, they are, they are the leaders, actually, one of the leading team in the PD field. And they have already established very efficient protocols to derive MSDA progenitor cells from human proponent stem cells. And the challenge that for us is if we can actually precisely adapt their original manual protocols, like we showed here, into this automated and closed climax prodigy system. In fact, we have successfully also fulfilled this task. Again, more technical details that you can also download from this application sheet. And here, I want to show you the side-by-side -side comparison between Climax Prodigy and Menu. Again, the differentiation results are very comparable between these two groups. So the cells that differentiated on the Climax Prodigy also shows very efficient uh, result. More than 80% of the resulting cells co-expressing the positive MSDA progenitor markers, OTX2 and FOXA2, so double positive. And also nearly no expression for the negative markers like uh, PEC6 or SOX1 like here, and also nearly no expression for the negative propotency markers like OCTO4, and very reduced expression of the uh, prefer preferative marker KS67. Last but not least, we are also developing a cardiomyocyte, cardiomyocyte differentiation process on the Climax Prodigy at human cell culture system. So using our newly released Stemax cardio differentiation kit, so we can already harvest these contradicting cardiomyocytes size within only eight to, to 10 days after the differentiation, very fast and robust. And here we have done three individual experiments on the ClinMax Prodigy. The flow cytometry uh, analysis on the max quant analyzer already showed the differentiation efficiency could reach between 80 to 90%. And if you have working, if you have worked with cardiomyocyte, then actually you know this is a very diff very decent differentiation efficiency. And already we could harvest 100 to 200 million cardiomyocytes from only one of those one liter cell stack. And we are currently still working on this, so we are scaling up this process by using larger external cultures vessels. You know, from one layer, we are planning to do it to five layer. Okay, so if you want to find more information about the Climax Prodigy at Human Cell Culture System, so that you can actually click on this link to go to our website. And there you can find, you can download the scientific posters, application sheets, and more details of the relevant product. Okay, so it seems like the presentation just took exactly 15 minutes. So we are almost as precise as our Climax Prodigy. Without further ado, I would like to shift your attention to the virtual demo. So then uh, you will see the Climax Prodigy in action. Hello everyone, welcome to our virtual demo today. And here, this is the Climax Prodigy cell manufacturing platform. For all the regional medicine and the adherent cell manufacturing workflows, we have designed a brand new Prodigy system, which is the adherent cell culture system. And in this virtual demo today, we will show you how to use this closed and automated system for adherent cell manufacturing, and how to do adherent stem cell expansion and differentiation processes on the Climax Prodigy. So as I just mentioned in the presentation, the uh, Climax Prodigy adherent cell culture system is a, is a modular system 
And this is the main menu. Currently, we're offering nine different modules to automate individual cell handling steps. And the users can actually freely combine different modules in different orders. And this gives them a really great degree of flexibility to adapt the complex manual SOPs or protocols into this closed and automated system. And you can see the main menu. So normally we would start, you know, for each cell manufacturing process, we would start with the number one module pre-process to install this GMP compliant and closed tubing set to the Prodigy system. The users can also use the pre-process module to test the integrity of the tubing set and also prime or block the tubing sets with appropriate medium or buffer for their uh, cell manufacturing process. So, but today, because we only have limited the time, we already installed the tubing set in advance and performed the integrity test. So now the system is all set for an adherent cell culture process. So what we will do today, we don't have the time, unfortunately, to run all the modules, but we will introduce you the key feature of each module. And particularly, we will use the number four inoculation module and number seven harvesting module to show you how to easily set up the system for cell manufacture. Okay, so the number two module is designed for density gradient centrifugation as is how it named. Well, for example, it could save the hands-on time for bone marrow mononuclear cell isolation by up to 90%. And the users can very easily connect the HSA containing Climax buffer to valve one, and the back with FACO to valve two here. And the 30 to uh, 100 ml starting materials, for example, bone marrow aspirates, to valve eight into this bag. And uh, setting up all the parameters will only take roughly five to 10 minutes. And then the Climax Prodigy adherent cell culture system will perform the density gradient centrifugation process automatically, and then collect the resulting cells into one of these target cell bags already connected to valve 10. So this also means that the users will be totally free for other important experiments. In comparison, we know that users will be probably occupied for hours to perform the density gradient centrifugation manually. The number three module is called coating, yeah? because we know that uh, in many cases, before we seed the cells into the culture vessels, we also need, need to co uh, coat the culture vessels with appropriate coating material. For example, in our adherent cell culture system-based proposing stem cell expansion process, we're using laminin 5 to one for the coating uh, of all the culture vessels. For all the coating activities, we designed this coating module. The users can uh, choose to coat the Climax Prodigy chamber, in the central code unit, or they can code these external culture vessels, for example, these big cell stacks. The users can also set up the coating temperature, the coating time, the volumes of your coating reagents, etc., etc., all according to the established SOPs or protocols. To inoculate your cells into the culture vessels, like I mentioned, we have the number four module, inoculation. Okay, we confirm that we are choosing the inoculation module. We have the option to inoculate the cells into the Climax Prodigy chamber or the external culture vessels. So today, so that you can see it clearly, I will inoculate uh, the starting cell materials into this one layer cell stack. So we will choose ECV, external culture vessel. Okay, so following the instructions on the screen that we can connect the starting materials to valve eight like this, or we can also inoculate the previously harvested cells from density gradient centrifugation on valve 10. But today, like I mentioned, we're starting a new manufacturing process so now uh, we have connected the starting materials already to valve 8. We have this barcode reader so that users can very easily 
enter the product code of all their uh, reagents, uh, materials, consumables, etc. The users can also enter the product code manually if that's possible. So in the end, all this information will be stored in a log file in the Prodigy system, which can be exported after uh, the, uh, the manufacturing is finished for your recording. So now we are connecting the, the external culture vessel. So this, uh, we have designed a special port, which uh, special valve, which is valve 19 for the ECV connection. Like I mentioned, all the product code can be entered via this barcode reader. So we just need to simply scan the barcode. Now the, the product code of this ECV is entered. We also have another GMP compliant Prodigy accessory, which is called one meter tube extension. It's actually here. It's actually a long tube, which you can use to connect the uh, tubing set with external culture vessels like this cell stacks. And you can also enter the barcode of this one meter tube extension. It shows up here. So now we, can, uh, we confirm that the starting material is one valve eight. So we have the option to choose the volumes of uh, our inoculation uh, starting material. So this time we will, use, we will inoculate 60 ml starting material. Then we also have the option to choose the volume of, your, of our final cell cultures. And this time we want to have 90 ml final cultures. And then the Prodigy system will calculate the difference in between and compensate the difference with either the standard culture medium, which is connected to valve three. This red, uh, represent, this red medium is representing a starting medium. Or we can also use a, a process specific inoculation medium, which is connected to valve seven. So at the moment, valve seven is very flexible. For example, uh, if we want to inoculate IPSCs, then we normally use our IPSC brew GMP medium with ROG inhibitor as a process specific inoculation medium. And for that, we need to connect it to valve seven. But today we, we will use valve three, the standard culture medium for inoculation. Now uh, we have chosen all the parameters. So in the summary page, the system will show you everything. Then you can check if everything is correct. Otherwise you choose undo to, to do the resetting. If everything is fine, we just press OK to proceed. The system will also ask us to check if the clamps are open or closed correctly. Yeah, if you are familiar with the system, and all these are already will be, you know, will be very smooth and will be re really quick because all the details, all the information you need is shown on the screen. So we have checked everything. We just need to press OK to proceed. As you see, we will use this as the inoculation. So number three valve is open to first prime the inner tube with this medium. And now valve eight is open. So the starting materials is being inoculated into, uh, through the tubing sets into the cell stack. As you can see, uh, the medium is inoc being inoculated uh, the, sorry, the starting cell material. And then you can switch to the status module and you can see this pump speed is only 60 ml per minute. It's actually quite slow because we have cell in there. We have to be very gentle to the starting materials. So we can always switch between uh, the status menu and the, the user program module, uh, menu. And in the status, you can see all the parameters of the Prodigy system. Okay, now valve eight is closed. Valve three is open again because we have 30 ml uh, difference between the final volume and the inoculation module, volume. So now the standard medium is being inoculated to compensate this difference and to culture the cells uh, with this uh, standard medium in the cell stack. Now you see we are empty, emptying the tube with air to make sure that all the medium uh, in the tubing is being inoculated. So there's no waste of the precious medium or starting cell ma materials. Mm -hmm. 
Now, wall one is open again, so the, the climax buffer is being inoculated, in, injected into the tube to clear the inner tube and then collect all the waste into the waste bag. This will happen every time you do an action. So the, the climax buffer will always be uh, automatically inoculated to the tubes to clear. Okay, after the, the inoculation, the system, uh, the users will be prompt to ensure the even distribution of the, uh, the external culture vessels. Then we also have the option to inoculate additional external culture vessels. In fact, we have another uh, prodigy accessory, which is this three-way tube adapter. So with this, you can connect uh, maximally three of these five-layer cell stack to the prodigy at once. So with three five-layer cell stack, you will get roughly 10,000 square centimeter surface space. That's a fairly large surface space for cell culture. But today we only have one ECV to handle. Now the inoculation is finished. So we are coming back to the, to the main menu of the adherent cell culture system. Okay, now we have inoculated the cells into the external culture vessels. Uh, the next module is the culture module. So uh, I want to point it out, the users will only need the culture module when they culture the cells in the Climax Prodigy chamber in the central code unit. So uh, we know that you know, the central code unit is a very multifunctional unit. There uh, you can control the concentration of CO2 and air. You can also set up the culture temperature and we also have a camera under the chamber so that you can monitor the cell growth during the manufacturing process. So for that, we will need to use the, the culture module. But today, we are culturing the cells into the, in this external culture vessel. So we will need to place this in an external incubator. So the conditions such as CO2 or air uh, and the temperature will need to be provided by an external incubator. So here I have a very smart tip. Because we are using the Climax Prodigy adherent cell culture system for our propotent stem cell or mesenchymal cell, cultivation very routinely in our R&D lab. We always have an incubator just next to the prodigy because we know that valve 19, which is for the ECV connection, is already automatically con uh, closed after the liquid handling. So the tubings are already disconnected. So uh, our R&D colleagues will just need to simply put the, the cell stack into the incubator without disconnecting this tube. But of course, if your incubator is very far away from the prodigy, you can also use this tube sealer to very easily seal off this tube. And then when needed, we can use the, this sterile welder to sterilely weld down and reconnect the culture vessels with the tubing set. Okay, now, we have inoculated cells into this external culture vessel in appropriate medium. For example, in our R&D lab, when we culture the PSCs or MSCs in the Climax Prodigy adherent cell culture system, we are actually using the IPSC brew GMP medium or the MSC brew GMP medium, which are GMP compliant and also manufactured following the guidelines of ISO 13485. And during the cultivation process, if we want to do medium change, then we will use this medium change module. For that, we just need to choose the module number six. And the users can do the medium change in the prodigy chamber here in the CCU, or they can do the medium change in the external culture vessels. Uh, the users can also choose to do complete medium change or partial medium change according to their SOPs protocols. They can also use the Climax buffer or the standard medium to rinse the cell cultures, to remove the debris or the dead cells, just like in the established uh, menu uh, SOPs, uh, menu processes. Now, when the cell cultures become confluent, then we need to harvest the cells from the external culture vessels or from the prodigy chamber. For that, we have designed the harvest module. So to harvest the cells, we need to choose the module number seven, 
So we confirm that we are using the harvesting module number seven. Then we are harvesting the cells from external culture vessels, the ECV, not the prodigy chamber. At the first, we have to define the uh, aspiration volume, how much volume that you want to remove from the cultures. In fact, the, uh, the, the volume that were inoculated in the last step, for example, last time we inoculated, uh, we have 90 ml cultures in the ECV. So this medium volume from the last step will be displayed by default. Of course, then, I mean, according to your protocol, if you want to partially remove uh, the medium, then you can also do so. But today we will remove all the 90 ml. Then, you know, during this step, you can also use the Climax buffer to rinse the cells because we know normally when we harvest the cells, we want to first wash the cell cultures to remove the dead cells or debris. And this can also be recapitulated by the system using this rinsing function. But today I will just skip the rinsing just to save some time. And uh, we can use the, the instructions here, just following the instructions, we can very easily connect the dissociation regions here, this blue reagents to valve six, and then use the barcode razor to enter the, bar the product code of the dissociation reagents. So next is the, the uh, volume of dissociation reagents. Of course, this will depend on the, uh, the, your specific protocols. This also depends on the, uh, uh, your culture skills. So all these dissociation parameters will be, uh, you can set them up. We, we are using 45 ml dissociation reagents today, and uh, we will dissociate the, uh, the cell cultures in the st cell stack for 15 seconds. I mean, this is only for, for you to see how the system works. And after the dissociation, we can also use different stopping reagents to stop the dissociation. We have different options. We could either, either use the above three, the standard culture medium to stop the dissociation, or use a very specific stopping reagents connected to valve five to stop the dissociation because the number five valve is now also flexible. For example, if you want to use the trypsin inhibitor, you can connect that to the valve five or simply none. For example, if we're using acrotase to dissociate the cells, we know that we don't need any specific stopping reagents to stop the dissociation. Today, we will use valve three the standard culture medium to stop the dissociation. And of course, we can choose the volume of the stopping reagents. We will have 22 ml today. So uh, now we just need to confirm that uh, the washing and the, the resuspension medium, this is also optional for the users. So we, after the dissociation, after the centrifugation, we can choose valve three, the standard culture medium to resuspend, to harvest your final, your resulting cells. Or if you have a process specific harvesting medium, you can connect it to valve seven. This valve seven and the valve five are always flexible. For example, in our adherent cell culture system based per potent stem cell expansion process, we are using the iPSC brew GP medium with rock inhibitor to harvest the iPSCs or ESCs. And for that, we just need to connect the, uh, uh, the medium to valve seven. But today, we will use valve three, the standard medium to resuspend the cells. And then we can also uh, use this medium to wash the, the cell cultures after the dissociation. We know that during the manual process, you know, when, once we harvest the cells, we collect the cells, we normally wash again, just to make sure that we don't waste any pressure cell cultures. And this can also be recapitulated in the adherent cell culture system. We will use 50 ml, uh, standard medium to wash. And another very cool parameter is this mechanical dissociation. We know that for certain cell types, in addition to the enzymatic dissociation, we also need to apply some a mechanical dissociation to ensure to uh, increase the uh, single cell dissociation of your final cultures. And for that, we have this function. So we just need to choose yes here. Then after the res cell resuspension, the resuspended cells will be pumped in and out this pump multiple times 
to improve the dissociation efficiency. So this is a very cool function and can be very well recapitulated in the uh, automated attuned cell culture system, just like how you do it manually. But today we choose no, just to save some time. So now, just like always, all the parameters that we have chosen are shown here. So you can check all the parameters if everything is set up correctly. And then the system will also ask you to check if the valves on valve six is open. Valve, because this is the dissociation regions and valve three is open. Uh, this one, valve 19, for the external cultural vessel connection is also open. So now on valve 10, we have integrated two target cell bags. So and another uh, like a flexible uh, dead end tube here. And this is like when you culture the cells, when you pass them multiple times, you need to weld on, weld off multiple bags. And we have designed this very long tubing here that you can connect as many bags as possible during the manufacture process. So today, we will close two of them and I will open this one so in the end the cell will be collected here. So now everything is set, I just press OK to proceed. As usual, first, the kinematic buffer will be inoculated, injected into the tube to wash the inner tube and then collect this waste into the, the waste bag. Now, the only hands-on during this process is to handle this ECV because this is not part of the prodigy. This is an external culture vessel. We just need to tilt. Now, the, this old culture medium will be removed from the cultures. And you can see here, it's, the pump speed is 300 ml per minute. So it's very fast because this is the only old medium. As you can see, actually, all the medium are completely removed from the culture vessels. Afterwards, the system will ask you to put it back to a horizontal position. Okay, now valve six is open, so the dissociation reagents is being injected through the tubing into the external culture vessels. As you can see, this the blue. Uh, reagents is being injected into the uh, cell stack. And you can always monitor what is happening uh, with the prodigy using the status menu. And you can see the pump speed, you can see the two pressure sensors here and here, and you can also see the temperature in the centricode unit, etc. So now we are transferring 20 ml Afterwards, the, the rest will go into the, the waste bag. Well, one is open again, so in between, we'll clean the inner tube with Climax buffer to make sure there's no cross contamination. Now we're waiting for 15 seconds to dissociate the cells. Okay, so the dissociation is over, it's finished. Now the number three is open because we choose the number three standard medium to stop the dissociation as a stopping reagent. Now uh, we, this 22 ml uh, stopping reagents will be inoculated, uh, will be injected to the, to the ECV. So now the cells are resuspended so now they are also detached from the culture vessels. So the system will ask us to tilt the ECV. So now we are collecting the cell suspension into the centricode unit, into the Kinemax Prodigy chamber through the, through the tubing. As I just mentioned, this uh, centricode unit is a multifunctional uh, device, uh, unit. It could work as an incubator. It also works as a centrifuge. You can see 
transferring 60, uh, si uh, 67 ml because we have 45 ml uh, dissociation reagent and 22 ml stopping reagents. Together is 67. Now you can see uh, we're emptying this with air, so all the cell suspension are completely being collected into the, into the chamber. Now we put it back to horizontal position. So because we also chose the number three standard medium to wash, so now again, 50 ml standard medium is being injected into the culture vessel to wash the space of this culture vessel. That just to make sure that we have collected all the cells and we don't waste any precious cell products. Of course, this is, uh, you, this is according to your SOP and the protocols. So we choose OK. We are now collecting this 50 ml uh, uh, washing reagents also into the Climax Prodigy chamber. As I said, this ECV handling is, only, is the only hands-on time you are doing during the whole process. But still, I mean, it's connected in this uh, closed and uh, sterile fashion, this manner. So all the liquid handling is per performed within this closed tubing set. So put it back to the horizontal position. Now, like I, like I just mentioned, this Climax Prodigy Chamber is working as a centrifuge, centrifugate, uh, like a centrifugation now. So then uh, the supernatant of the, the, uh, the medium will be slowly removed from the chamber and then cells the, the remaining cells will be stayed uh, in the Climax Prodigy chamber. And you can see that uh, the volume in the uh, Prodigy chamber will be reduced more and more. And the reduced medium will be collected in the waste bag. During this, uh, during this time, I also want to give you another small tip. For example, in our R&D lab, we also have a small fridge next to the Prodigy, in addition to the incubator. This is because uh, the medium, before the medium is injected into the cell cultures, this medium will be first moved, uh, warmed up in this heat exchange unit in the back of the central code unit. So the medium will be warmed up, warmed up to the uh, room temperature being before injected into the cell cultures. So if you have this fridge next to the Prodigy, then you can always keep your medium in this cool and dark environment. So this is very cool because we know that this saves a lot of time for warming up or cooling down your medium. And more importantly, we also know that in these culture medium, they normally contain a lot of very sensitive cytokines or small molecules. So this is also very good for the quality and the shelf time of your culture medium. So you make them very stable by keeping them in a dark and cool place. Actually now, uh, this is very little uh, reagents or medium is left in the chamber. So the, the cells are now uh, attached to the inner wall of the, of the Prodigy chamber. Then uh, the rest will be uh, collected into the waste bag. Okay, the centrifugation is stopped. So the next step is the resuspension. If you remember correctly, we chose the number three valve, the standard medium to resuspend the cells. So now the valve three is open. So we are uh, in inoculating this standard medium into the prodigy chamber. And then if you probably, you can, you can see it from this, uh, from the camera, the chamber actually will start to shake like a washing machine, and you will see in a second. You see, at first it spins in this direction and stop and start to spin in the opposite direction.
to shake off the cells and resuspend the cells, detach them from the inner wall into the resuspension medium. So as you see on the screen, now the chamber is shaking. So, okay, so now the cells are very gently shaked off the inner wall of the prodigy and being resuspended in, in the harvesting medium. And then, as I mentioned before, when we, when we set up the system, so we opened one of the clamps on valve 10, so the, the cell suspension, the resulting cells, will be harvested in this cell bag. So you can see the shaking at the same time, uh, the tubing size is transferring the cell suspension from the chamber into the target cell bag. Again, the pump speed is only 60 ml per minute. So it's kind of, it's, it's not that fast because we have to be very gentle to the cells. So the, afterwards, the Climax Prodigy system will automatically calculate how the volume of your resulting cells. So actually you will know uh, the volume of your final cell cultures. We're still transferring the volume, but there's very little left. Actually, during this step, like the user interaction is not needed. The users actually are also free for other important experiment because the prodigy will handle this automatically. Okay, now the centrifugation is stopped. We have the resulting cells collected in this target cell bag. So this is, the fin this is your final cell product. Like here, we have another very cool function. Uh, we have integrated the sampling pouches to the, to the target cell bag. So later, after the, the, the Prodigy system show us how, how much volume we have collected in the end, we can also take a small sample and then use this sample for all the QC analysis. Okay, so the harvest is completed. Now we have 108 ml cell suspension collected in this uh, target cell bag. So now what I, can, what, what, what I can do is like I just open the clamp of the sampling pouch. I can squeeze and then you will have two to four ml cell suspension being collected in this sampling pouches. Then you close the clamp. You could use this tube sealer to seal it off. Then you can take this sampling pouch to your QC department for all the IPC QC analysis for flow cytometry, for immunofluorescence, etc., according to your SOPs or your in house protocols. So now the harvesting is completed. Now we have collected the cells, the harvested cells in this target cell bag. So after the harvesting, if we combine the harvest module with the inoculation module, we can continue to replay these harvested cells into new cell culture vessels. Basically we're splitting, we're uh, passaging the cells and to continue the cell culture. This is how we combine the different modules and use them in different ways for different purpose. But if your cell manufacturing process is already finished at this point, then you can use the number eight module deinstallation to deinstall the tubing set from the uh, Climax Prodigy device. It's a very simple process. You just need to follow the instructions on the screen to deinstall. And then you could use the number nine module, the end module, to finalize the, uh, the manufacturing process. And then you can export the log file from the Prodigy system for your recording. 
Unfortunately, due to the time, li time limit today, we cannot run each module for you. But hopefully you get uh, you know, the key features of the system. Okay, thanks a lot for your attention today. Hopefully that you have seen something interesting in our virtual demo. But if you want to learn more information about our brand new Climax Prodigy adhesion cell culture system, and if you want to see how we automate adhesion stem cell expansion and differentiation process in the system, so please visit us either on our website or directly contact us via emails.